Hey guys, what's going on? It's RC Knockout, and I am back with another video. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Nolan, and in today's video, I'm going to be once again tearing apart the rear differential on my Arma Crate and EXB. Now, if you've watched the previous video, you'll know that it began clicking. I have a diff uh, locker spool in the rear of this, um, and my my guess is that the pins have broken. At least one of the pins on one of the sides of the diff has most likely broken, but my fear is that it actually wallowed out the spool. So I'm hoping that that aluminum spool did not get wallowed out by the pins. I'm hoping it's just that the pins broke. But the only way I'm going to find that out is if I actually tear it apart and speed up this entire process. I'll be using a drill and we're going to get this thing torn apart, look inside of it and see if the problem is just the pins, which I'm crossing my fingers. That's what the issue is. So let's jump right into it. So, I've gotten pretty used to tearing this apart. I believe this is a two and a half millimeter. And we just have the four screws on here. There's one, two, three, four on the diff. And then I have to get, well, it's easier also if you take the uh, shocks off. So the bottom shock mount to actually get those diffs to pop out from the dog bones. Um, also, I need to undo, right up here, I need to undo that um, front sway bar. Or the, the front part of the sway bar. For the rear. As you can see right here also another thing that happened. I don't know if that broke or if it just came loose but I think I lost a lot of shock oil out of this rear shock the last time I ran it as well. So let's dive right into it. We're just going to take these four screws off. Alright guys now I'm going to move to these ones. It's kind of hard to see on camera um, but it's right up here. This I believe is just a two mil. And we got that one out. This side, exact same thing. All right, guys, we got the differential cover off. Now let's see about getting this actual diff out. I'm going to try to get the dog bones pointed towards me and see if we can get this out. should come out pretty easily. I mean, it's been out quite a few times. So let's see. All right, there we go. Holy smokes. Alright guys, it completely flew out, but, and got some dog hair all over it, but, uh, it's out. Alright guys, now that we got the differential out, um, you can kind of see the play in it. By hand, I can't really break it loose, like, um, like it was actually spinning. The whole thing was spinning, and it wouldn't spin the rear tires anymore, and I'm thinking... So the pins must still be somewhat intact because I'm, I'm having a difficult time actually turning it by hand. Um, but there is definitely some play in there as you can see. So let's get these four screws right here out. These I believe are two millimeter and uh, then we'll be inside of the diff and then we'll find out what the actual issue is. There we go. As you guys can see, the last time I did damage this uh, this little gasket right here got damaged. But uh, I guess it doesn't really matter since we don't have an actual differential in there. And as you can see, here's this side. I mean, definitely something's happened here. So I mean, there's definitely something going on where it's begun to wallow this out, as you can see. There's definitely something going on right here and here where you can see the pin is kind of elongated this and it looks like it started to lift that up because there was not, I believe, those two little nubs right here and here before. So, um, let's try to get the spool out. Oh, there. It came out that easily, guys. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, but it definitely started to, like, undercut underneath of there and it's raised kind of the lip up on both sides. So maybe I need to shim shim those diffs a little bit more, but that's going to be hard to do, to shim these actual, um, shim this any more 
any more than I already have underneath the pin. Now the pin right there, that one's not broken. And this one is not broken. So, interesting. That's what I figured I would find when I got into here. I figured one of the pins would be broken. Neither of the pins is broken. And it doesn't look like this has gotten to the point where it's wallowed it out. This side's definitely done more damage right here. So you can see there's something going on where this began to dug in, dig in. The pin obviously has a little bit of room to move in there. Started to dig in on this side somewhat and a little bit on that side. But I still don't see how that would have given unless it's not the rear differential and it's in fact the center diff. But I have a feeling it's a rear. I think what I'm going to do is, I remember when I took this apart, I was not able to get another washer underneath of this side. I think this is the side of the spool that's actually begun to wallow out more. So you can see it started to undercut there and push up some of the aluminum material, but not wallowed out the way that I thought it would have been. Like I was worried that it spun this whole thing within there, and it definitely didn't do that. So I'm trying to figure out how there was no power going to the rear. And I remember when I when I fixed this the last time when I put the spool in, I could only fit four washers under there, or four shims, I should say. And I know I'm not going to get another one under there, so I think what I'm going to do is, since this is the side that's damaging this, I think I'll put... Um, or since this is the side that's being damaged by that bottom one, I think I'll flip it and put this side, which is in a little bit better shape, but there is a little bit going on here. And then I might attempt to get another one under this side. And if I can't do that, then I think I'm just going to try to tighten this up as much as I possibly can. So there's no movement within there because that's all I can think to do. So we're going to basically put the spool back in just the other way around and put the less damaged side down. Now, this side, this is the thing that I'm kind of wondering about. Like, can I get another shim? That came out pretty easily, but how many shims can I get under that side? So, be right back, guys, and uh, I'll try to fit another couple shims, at least one, back underneath that side. I want these pins pushed as close into that spool as possible so it doesn't round out that spool, which is already beginning to happen at this on this side. Obviously, the pin's somewhere near the top. You might not be able to see, but it's digging into the metal and it's pushing up on the aluminum right there. So we want this deeper down in there and hopefully it won't be able to spin that. And I was able to get two more on this side. So that's good. So hopefully this will tighten it up. Let's get this side set down. I might also take apart the center diff and see if the center diff is an issue. Because I don't know. I mean, I'd be surprised if it was just this because this did not look like it was spinning. It didn't look like those pins were spinning in there, so um, it could be the center differential. I know it's not the front. The front's the only one that was still working. I will do a quick time lapse, and I'll be right back with you guys, and we're going to see if that does anything. So now just got to get this grub screw back in right here, and uh, then we can install this diff back in the rear. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and put this back in. As you can see, a little bit of play, but um, I don't know. It seems about the same as it was. It doesn't seem really a whole lot different. All right, guys, it looks like we're on to round two. So I just took that rear differential apart, just tested it in the house, and I'm still hearing a bunch of clicking. So I'm pretty sure the rear diff is good. It looks like there was some metal flakes in there and maybe a little tiny bit of teeth in, from the back that were missing, but I don't think that's where that clicking is coming from. So next we're going to be working on the center diff because that's my next best guess would be to go to that center diff. We're going to take that apart see what's going on in there and maybe that's where the problem is coming from so let's jump right into it so then we can access these four screws on top so got that out like such 
Because I can, I can tell you right now, this is like silky smooth. So there's no issue with this. Which means the issue's coming from the rear diff. Like with this rear diff. Now it's not connected to anything. Huh. I can feel it through here if I put my finger on the, on the output of the pinion. I'm feeling the feeling. Oh, that's great. I don't know what I'm going to do, guys. I might just end it here and put this back together because I honestly have no idea. I mean, there was some teeth, little bits of teeth that were chipped, but I wouldn't think it'd make that much noise. Maybe, but maybe I'll have to wait for Arma to send me that limited slip diff. There might not be much more I can do because the issue's not with the spool. So it must be somehow the gear mesh in between the teeth and the pinion in the rear diff. I mean, maybe I didn't look at the pinion. I guess I didn't pull the pinion out. Maybe the pinion's chipped. There was some metal shavings in there, but I looked at the diff gear and the diff gear had a few partially chipped teeth, but it didn't look like anything that would cause too much noise. So I didn't, didn't think much about it. Alright guys, so I opened the rear differential up, because if you saw, I opened up the rear and the spool looked fine. Um, I mean, it, it definitely was starting to like eat away a little bit, but that definitely is not what the issue is. As you can see, there's definitely some play in here where those pins are moving a little bit, but um, there's something else grinding in the back, because then I moved on to the center diff. Took the center diff out, didn't even bother taking it apart because I spun it and it was smooth as silk. So, I know it's coming from the rear. Confirm that once I disconnected it from the front from the uh, center drive shaft. Here's the pinion in the rear Now I do have to say I Don't know if you guys can see that well those bottom part. I don't know the the tips look very very sharp, but Overall this gear looks Fine, I don't see any chips on it anywhere Alright guys, maybe now you can see better. I turned the light off on the camera, I mean. It almost looks like it's starting to spin. Almost like the gear mesh isn't going to be right now. Almost like it spun. I don't know if you can see that, but it appears that the teeth are digging in to the actual pinion further in. Unless those indentations are supposed to be there. Can you guys see that? You guys see what I mean? How right in here there's little lines where it it looks as though the gear mesh is messed up to the point where it's actually digging in to the actual inner part of the pinion right here. Unless that's how it's designed. Also, these ends look kind of sharp. Almost like it twisted them. But none of the teeth, all the teeth are intact. I mean, there's no chips off of this. It almost looks... I mean, this is spiral cut. It almost looks like it started to like unspiral cut it, if that makes sense. Because I think these are spiral cut gears. They're starting to look more and more straight. Does that make sense, guys? That pinion doesn't look spiral cut really all that much anymore. I'm trying to get it so you guys can actually see it. I mean, that doesn't look very spirally. There's definitely some spiral cut in it still. But something looks up with that pinion. Something looks like it's twisted. I mean, from this side, it still looks like it's spiral cut from the front. But you guys can see, like, the tips, the ends look very sharp for some reason, but the teeth look fine otherwise. Now, looking at the diff gear, I did notice a few little chips off on the diff gear, but I didn't notice any teeth missing. So I'm going to take a closer look. I guess right here, there's kind of a big chip missing off of that tooth. That tooth looks somewhat grounded. The easiest way is just looking at the side of it. Ooh, that one right there, definitely grounded down. These two right here look kind of grounded down. Because here's how they're supposed to be up here. You guys can see the points. Then look how right here and here there's no points on those teeth on the sides of them. Sorry, my hands are shaking. I have uh, shaky hands. Can't really help it. Most of these look intact. Some of them look a little bit ground down near the top. But really, I only see about two or three teeth that actually look damaged. That one's damaged right here. 
this one by my thumb. That one's obviously been somewhat rounded off at the top of the tooth. And then the one right next to it, or this one kind of has as well. That one. That one, the top appears to be grounded down a little bit. Maybe this one as well. So yeah, there's maybe two or three four teeth in here that look like they've been somewhat grounded down. Now let's see, it meshes up against this like such. So I'm gonna try to mimic how it meshes. The only thing I can think is that it's actually pushing this. How can that even happen? So something's definitely happening I'm trying to figure out what's happening though. I mean it spins on that, but yeah, it's not spinning smoothly. You guys can see, like it's not super smooth. There's kind of the issue area right in there. Trying to get you guys a view of this so you can honestly see this firsthand. Here's the teeth coming up right here. These next three are the ones that are, look really ground down. I mean, not enough though. See, I don't know what the gear mesh is in there though. That's the issue area, but I can tell you. With my hands up against it like this, just lightly, it still goes across there pretty well. Like, there's a little bit of a noise. I mean, if the gear mesh is off and it's, like, pushed out, I could see how it could be skipping over these teeth. But they're still making contact when it's close. I don't know, that just doesn't seem chipped enough to where that's where the noise is coming from. Most of these teeth are intact. Because you can see at the very top how those edges of the top of the pinion are kind of rounded. Almost like it wasn't touching right there. I mean, it doesn't go super smoothly, but also it doesn't seem like there's enough going on there where it would be making that type of noise. There's the issue spot right there. I mean, it would have to be a way, quite a ways away from the, I mean, I guess I can, I can, I can shim this so this pushes it closer because I do have the shims right here that'll push the diff closer. And that's about all I can do on the rear. I can, uh, I don't even think I have to take this apart. I think all I have to do is just slide this right here, these ARA 709031s. These ones were the ones I used one, I think, on the front. I don't know. I watched a video, and they did put it on the outside of the bearing like this without taking the uh, differential back apart, but it would have been a lot easier to take the diff back apart because that barely fit those two shims in there where it was able to actually seat down in there. I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but uh, they're kind of mangled a little bit, but it, it'll work. I just need to make sure when I put the cover over, that closes over it flush, and holds both of those in like it is on the bottom. So I'm gonna do that and see if that, I mean, it was really difficult to get down in there and see if that will hopefully improve our problem with the teeth obviously somehow slipping or something's happening. Um, I put a shim in the diff uh, just to push the differential a little bit closer to the pinion gear because I thought the mesh might be off. And this is basically still the end result. I didn't realize I possibly bent drive shaft up there. Sounds horrible. Definitely still coming from the back. I don't even want this machine anymore to be completely honest with you. I'm so sick and tired of it. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. Also, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos on my EXB in the future. See ya.